Get a nice big piece. And look at that. So awesome. Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Matt. I am your host, Matt Taylor. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make angel food cake. Oh yeah. Angel food cake is one of my all time most favorite cakes. I used to have it pretty much every year for my birthday. I would have it um, with strawberries and whipped cream because I love it so much. And it's pretty easy to make at home with only six ingredients and an optional seventh ingredient. If I can do it, you can do it. Before I move on, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Let's get baking. Down below in the description box, you'll find the list of the ingredients and their amounts. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius. Now I have one and three fourths cup of white granulated sugar, and I'm gonna put this in my food processor. If you can buy super fine sugar or caster sugar, then just use that and you can skip this step. But we wanna use granulated sugar and turn it into super fine sugar, but we're not using powdered sugar for this, okay? So we're just gonna pulse and mix this until um, we get it super fine. All right, it only takes about a minute or so. And now I want to take about a cup of this fine sugar. Make sure I don't get it everywhere. Okay, that's pretty good. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm gonna set this aside and then we're gonna come back to the food processor. In the food processor, I'm gonna add one fourth teaspoon of salt and that's gonna balance out the sweetness in the cake. And then I'm gonna add one cup of cake flour. Now you can use all purpose flour, but I really recommend using cake flour if you can find it. Put that back in there. All right, now I'm just gonna pulse this just for like 20, 30 seconds. There we go, fantastic. All right, and then I'm just gonna transfer it to this bowl. I wanna mention if you don't have a food processor and you don't have something like a coffee grinder or something like that, you can just use the normal granulated sugar. It won't turn out as well, but it'll still turn out. And you could use something like, to mix the sugar and the flour, you could use like a, some kind of a strainer or a sifter will work fine also, or just whisk it all together, okay? All right, and now I take a large bowl, or if you have a stand mixer, you're gonna use your mixer bowl. And then I have one and a half cups of only egg whites. And I've set these out at room temperature for about 30 minutes. Room temperature egg whites whisk up better than cold egg whites. And I recommend using fresh egg whites from eggs and not using like the, the store-bought egg whites. And then just save the yolks and you could use the yolks in egg custard. I have a, a video for egg custard that you can find. Also um, pumpkin pie uses egg yolks or like key lime pie, something like that. So you can save those egg yolks and use them in other dishes. All right, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with my hand mixer or if you have a stand mixer, then you'll use that. And let's just beat this until it gets frothy. Also, before I move on, make sure that there is no egg yolk at all inside of your egg whites. It needs to just be pure egg whites with no egg yolk. Okay, we got this frothy. And now I'm gonna add in cream of tartar. Now, the cream of tartar is pretty important because it helps stabilize the egg whites. But if you absolutely can't find it at the store, you should just be able to find it in the spice aisle. If you can't find it at all, then you can leave it out. 
then I have just a little bit of um, almond extract and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. All right, and now let's start beating this. All right, after a couple of minutes of beating the eggs, they will have probably doubled, maybe even tripled in volume. Not quite at soft peaks yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our super fine sugar that's left over, about a cup, and we're gonna add it about a tablespoon at a time, uh, waiting after it mixes for about 15 seconds in between each scoop. That way the sugar gets kind of dissolved in with the egg whites. This is where a stand mixer comes in handy, but you can do it like this holding your hand mixer in one hand and just scooping with the other, okay? You can also just hold the cup and then just kind of shake some in about a tablespoon at a time. You don't have to use a spoon. Okay, and then we're gonna keep beating this until we get soft peaks. So like right now, this just drains off like it's not there yet. Some recipes will say to go to stiff peaks um, and several will say to do soft peaks. And I'm just gonna do soft peaks. And the idea behind the soft peaks is that it gives more room for the egg whites to expand while baking as opposed to the stiff peaks. But so many recipes call for either way, so uh, you can't go wrong either way. All right, there we go. See how that little peak right there just barely curls over? That's what we mean when we say soft peaks. Just give it a little tap -a Another test that you can do is you can just grab some of it and run it through your fingers. And as long as you don't feel any gritty sugar, then you're good to go also. And now it's time to fold in our flour and sugar mixture and salt. Again, we're just gonna fold it in. We're not gonna stir. If you stir it, you're liable to break up all that nice air that you just caught, or that, that you just got. And so I'm just gonna do about a third of it. And then take my spatula, just go underneath it like this. Just fold it. Okay. All right, so you just fold until when you fold, you don't see any more flour mixture, okay? And kind of go through the middle and fold up. And as long as you don't see any flour, dry flour, you're good to go. And now comes the pan. You have to use a tube pan or angel food cake pan. A bunk cake pan just won't really work. And this particular one from Wilton has a removable bottom that's very common. You don't grease this at all. I know if you watch my cake videos, I'm like crazy about greasing and flouring, but you don't want to do that with the angel food cake because the angel food cake, as it bakes, it's gonna climb up this kind of sticky or whatever sides of the pan and that's essential. So do not grease your pan. This was pretty cheap. I just picked it up at Walmart for like nine bucks. Um, but I'll put a link down below where you can pick one up online. They're not very expensive. And you can use this for other types of cakes as well, not just angel food cake. And so we're gonna just put some in here. I'm gonna try to not to get it all over the sides. And just come in here and we're gonna spread it out. And then come in with like a butter knife and we're gonna just kind of 
swirl around it, zigzagging. And this is just going to make sure that there's no air pockets and that it all just settles nicely. And now into the oven it goes. Again, 350 Fahrenheit, 176 Celsius. And we are going to bake this for 35 to 45 minutes. Check it at 35. And then when you poke on, push on it and it springs back, or if you poke it with a like a bamboo skewer and it comes out clean, it's ready to go. And it'll get all nice and golden brown on top. On to that step. All right, and when it comes out of the oven, it'll look like this, nice and golden brown on the top. Uh, it probably will have some cracks in it, but don't worry about that, that's very normal. All right, so I just have a small glass that has kind of a wide bottom to it. And then I just flip this over. And then we are going to flip the cake pan over and set it right there, like that. And we'll let it sit here for an hour to two hours so it can cool completely. Kind of weird, I know, but if you don't let it cool this way, then it's liable to collapse on you and we don't want that, okay? And then after it has cooled, you can flip it over. And now I'll take like a cake spatula or a knife and run it along the edge of the cake to loosen it. And then I have a thinner one, or you can like use a, a butter knife, go around the edge like that. And then we should be able to pull this thing up. You can push it on the bottom. Yeah, look at that. Awesome. And then you can just run this along the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to take a cake pedestal. And then we will just turn that over. Boom. Amazing. There we go. Pretty awesome. And now it's time to cut into it. And I usually use my bread knife or another serrated knife. And so it just cuts it a lot easier. Get a nice big piece. And look at that. So awesome. And then I'll add some fresh fruit. A lot of times, most of the time, I'll slice up the strawberries and then add a couple tablespoons of sugar to them and just let them sit for a while. And it makes a nice little strawberry topping. Or you could also just do powdered sugar and then whipped cream. A lot of different ways that you can s serve it. My favorite way is with whipped cream and strawberries. Awesome. All right, the angel food cake is done and turned out fantastic. Pretty easy to do, simple ingredients. If I can do it, you can do it. This recipe makes somewhere between 12 and 16 servings, depending on the size you make the slices of cake. Or in my case, I'll get about four to six servings. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I probably will wind up eating most of this myself because it is my favorite. So over the next period of two to three days, I am gonna be in heaven. I'm Matt Taylor. This has been another episode of In the Kitchen with Matt. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or requests, put them down below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thumbs up, down the corner, push it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Take care. Time for me to dive into this. Now this time, I'm just going to pick it up and take a bite. Oh yeah, mm-mm-mm. Mmm, mm-mm-mm, mmm, mmm. So light and fluffy, absolutely delicious.